Hello fellow coder, welcome back to the Fresh Vote series where we are building a real world Java web app from scratch. Now in the previous video we outlined a bug uh, whereby when we visited our new product endpoint or rather the P endpoint and typed in the product name, we were redirected to the uh, sort of global, I shouldn't say global, the, the publicly facing uh, product page where we can actually create a feature request. But when we clicked on create a feature request, we got a 404 error. Um, and that's a little strange because the the endpoint uh, should uh, work because we have product slash product ID slash features is what we are looking at. Um, so that's what this video is all about is debugging that issue. So uh, let's do that. So in the basically with 404 errors, it typically means um, that the page isn't found, right? 404 means page not found. So uh, let's make sure that all of the, um, uh, you know, common things that you would expect to see um, are here. Like, you know, let's make sure the default workflow that we're all used to is actually, you know, there's no typos, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, products, product. Well, first thing I want to do is, you know, the, the, the leading forward slashes are always... Um, confusing. I always forget whether we need them or we don't need them. So it seems like these guys have the leading forward slashes and that works, you know, leading, leading, leading. Okay. Um, one thing I don't see here is the request mapping at the, at the top level. Um, whereas the feature controller has the request mapping at the top level. Let's just double check and make sure that our import is, uh, from the spring framework, which it is. So that's good. Um, I don't know if we need to, to specify a value here. I don't believe so. Um, this means that this endpoint, if we just write it like this, will work for both a get and a post and maybe any other um, uh, HTTP request type. So when you don't specify a request type, I think it just blindly does it for all of them. At least that's my um, my thought or feeling about it. So, I mean, this should work for a get request, but I believe, were we doing a post? Yeah, we were doing a post um to the products product ID features endpoint so one thing that we can do to just sort of debug this is let's comment this one out and let's change the post mapping to uh handle that same um endpoint and let's see if that makes any difference whatsoever uh so that means my my uh what should we call it server will reboot we have a path variable here uh, which again comes from Spring Framework, so that's good. Uh, products, product ID, features, we're bringing in the product ID. Hopefully we'll get to this point. Let me actually start it in, in debug mode and, and um, make sure that uh, we, well, hopefully we see that it gets in here. <clears throat> uh, and then it hopefully, you know, we'll return the, oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think I see what is going on here. We have a post mapping, which returns feature, but I don't know if we need a get mapping. We probably need a get mapping for that as well. So my th thought is this is still gonna break, but let's go ahead and log back in. And if I say create feature request, yep, 404. I believe what's happening here is we are missing um, a, a get request. So what's happening is when we post, it creates a feature and then it returns the feature view, right? Uh, but I believe the feature view needs to have a an endpoint mapped as well. So we need a get mapping for um, products product ID and features. But then we would need a feature ID as well, right? That's typically how this uh, this works. Um, is yeah, we we would also need a feature ID. Um, because <laughs> that's what we're creating here. When we create a feature, this will return, at least I think it returns a feature, right? So this will create one in the database. We'll call it a feature. And that feature object will now have a feature ID that gets created. So also another red flag here in my mind is I have a post mapping, but I'm not returning a redirect. So that's also a red flag for me. We want to, whenever we're doing a post mapping, we typically want to redirect to something. So we would redirect to products slash the uh, product ID. Uh, so let's pump in the product ID slash features, right? Cause that's the endpoint is features. 
and then slash, and then a feature ID. So we have a feature dot get ID here, right? Because this this uh, feature object will contain an ID. And then therefore, since we're redirecting to this endpoint, this is a get request that we are performing, then we need a, a, a get mapping that will correspond with that URL, that endpoint. So I think that was the issue. So now, uh, well, let me just finish this off and make sure that this um, works. So we'll just call this get feature. And we have a path variable of a long called a product ID. And we also have a path variable because we have two path variables, one here, one here, uh, a long, and it's a feature ID. Public string, fix all my typos. Control shift O to import my get mapping. Um, so we have post mapping and a get mapping up here. And then this guy will return the feature view, right? So that's where we are actually returning a view, which is the feature HTML page, which we've created. Um, which, does this guy have anything? No, it just says new feature. So for now, let's keep it very basic. Let's only return the feature view. Um, in the next iteration of this, we need to actually load up the feature ID from the repository such that we can populate the model and thus populate the view with the information from the feature that we are loading. Okay, so let's go back. <clears throat> let's log in. So now we are on the product page and on the product page, we want to create a feature request. So when I click on this, uh, it still breaks. Okay, that's fine. Let's let's find out why it's still not happy with us. So the feature controller, is my debug working here? It doesn't seem like there's a check mark in this guy. Um, so let's make sure there's a check mark in here. Post time products, product ID features. <clears throat> And also, do we have any warnings in our console or anything when we boot up? No, it's all info. There are some warnings here. Compass.v class does not override. Okay, that's fair enough. Those are some, yeah, that's standard warning type stuff. We can fix that in the future. Uh, Spring GPA OpenView is enabled by default. Therefore, database queries uh, may be performed during view rendering. Okay, that's a new one for me, but I don't think that has anything to do with the bug that we are encountering. So now let me confirm that there's a checkbox on our, so look at that, eh? There's no checkbox. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, I see the problem. This happens to me constantly. So I'd added a request mapping annotation up here, but why did I forget to add, ladies and gentlemen, the controller mapping? Oh, so embarrassing it happens to me all the time this is why i say as soon as you create a controller you always annotate it with a controller annotation but clearly i still don't listen to my own advice but now you see that the the, the breakpoint has a checkbox right has a it it's it can get into this code so that was one red flag for me um was i didn't see that check checkbox that check mark in um in the breakpoint which means it's not really tied into anything uh, but now it is because now that it's annotated at controller, it will be managed by spring. It will be a, a bean or whatever, a singleton bean that gets managed by the uh, the context. And, and, so, and anyway, oh boy. So there you go. That was, that's the root of the issue. Um, so if I refresh this page, log back in, say create feature request. Now we get into there and we hit that break point. Okay. So it was saying 404 not found because it, this wasn't recognized as a controller and our, our endpoints weren't being mapped to anything at all, okay? So that was the root cause of that issue. So, you know, it took me about 10 minutes to figure it out, but that's the process. Uh, that's the process. That's how it goes. So now let's now that we're debugging, let's uh, uh, go into our, um, our code here that we've created. Let me step over, which is what, F6? Yeah, step over is F6. So we'll step over this code. And if all goes well, it will create, um, based on the product ID of one, it will create a feature and put it into our database and tie it into the product ID uh, number one. So let's see if that works. Okay, we see an insert statement, fantastic. Uh, so that should work. And then it'll redirect to the feature and the feature will have an ID, see? Has an ID of one as well, because it's a brand new feature. So it'll redirect us to slash product slash one slash features slash one, which will then map to this 
get mapping and we'll just go in here and return the feature view uh, if all goes well again and we should just see there you go a screen that says new feature so there we go the the root cause of that bug which again it happens to the best of us clearly um i always forget my uh, my annotations at the uh, class level for controllers and i think it's mostly controllers i typically don't forget the services but i've definitely forgotten services before so at controller at service and uh, to a lesser extent at repository are the three um, main class level um, annotations that I always forget. So don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, now what I'm going to do is let's refactor this code so that we don't have these long um, URLs in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-instate uh, this code, this request mapping code at the top. I'm going to move it down just because I typically like to have controller at the top. That's just a preference thing. Um, let's re-import request mapping. So now product, product ID features is sort of the root of our uh, controller. So now we can sort of get rid of the, the um, it's like we are, uh, what's the mathematical term for when you pull stuff out of brackets and you put it in front? I forget anyway. It's been a long time since my math classes, ladies and gentlemen. So now what we can do is we can remove this completely for the post mapping because it's going to just map to this. And we can remove almost all this except for uh, feature ID, uh, which is just going to append to the end of features. So let's stop the server, save that code. Let's reboot the server. And let's put some breakpoints in here and see if the check boxes go in there. They do, okay. Leads me to believe that I've mapped them correctly. So now if we go to, uh, <clears throat> let's go back. And it's going to ask us to log in. Hopefully that'll take us back to the yeah uh, product page. I say create feature request. It'll go so good. It still goes in here. It's still mapped properly. Fantastic. We create a feature. It gets inserted inserted into the database. We redirect to that feature. There it is being redirected. As you can see, we have feature ID is two, product ID is one, and then boom, we go to this and we see that our URL uh, is correct. We have product one, feature two. Fantastic. So, um, oops, that's my recording. So we have our endpoints are working properly. We've, you know, uh, refactored this stuff so that, you know, we're back to where we started with the um, endpoint being in the, uh, at the class level in the request mapping annotation. And uh, yeah, everything looks fantastic now. So it's working as expected. So now in the next video, what we will do is um, start to build out that uh, feature request page, right? Now we wanna be able to add a new feature. We wanna be able to populate um, the, the entity itself. So the feature entity is here, the domain. So the feature has a title, description, status, and it's tied to a product as well. So title, description, status. Um, status is sort of something that the, um, the system will assign to it and the owner of the product will update. So that's not something from the sort of end user level that will have access to this other than to see the status. But the title and description are going to be editable by the user that creates um, this particular product, uh, feature request. So that's a good point. Um, that's something I just said out loud, but I don't know if I have this in my uh, data model yet is um, this I believe is wide open so the user um, doesn't have to log in I don't well I guess they do actually never mind I did definitely have to log in to access this page um, although I think in a previous video I had said when I say this page I mean this page we had to log in to see this I believe I have not made the change in the security config um, to open that up have I What's open? Register, images, and that's it. Those are the only, or three things that have permit all. The root level, the register, and the images folder are wide open. So yeah, you, you do have to log in to get to this page. So that's, that's I believe, um, that's I believe that's how I would want it to be. Uh, I You need to be logged in as a user in order to add, request a new feature. I don't think you need to be logged in as a user to see all the feature requests. So that's something that we're gonna have to do. Um, but definitely adding a new feature request, you should be logged in. Okay, cool. So that's one thing that we're gonna do in the next video. 
uh, we'll populate out this new feature page. We'll pull the values from the database and allow us to do all the CRUD operations for the feature entity in the database. Uh, and then from there, we can start putting in these uh, the, the, the flavors that I was just talking about in terms of who can see what when they're logged in and when they're not logged in. Cool? So that's what will be uh, in the next video and in the future. So I look forward to seeing you there. Take care of yourself. As always, happy learning. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are watching this on YouTube. Thank you very much for your support. I'll see you in the next one.